Today in the news, we got AMD's small and big Navi, we got Nvidia rumors and some Intel. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Real quick announcement before we start, I've got a Q&A brewing for this weekend, so leave your questions down below. It could be about pretty much anything, just make sure to use the hashtag Q&A. I know I didn't do the last one, so I'll also use questions from that one. All right, let's get into it. Now, of course, one of the big pieces of news for this week is the release of the RX 5600 XT. I did not get a review sample, obviously, but if you do need the info, click up here to watch Hardware Connects' review. It's great since it gives you all of the info you need to make a good buying decision, while also touching on the uh, old and the new VBIOS. I actually made a whole video about it, but I decided to stop editing at Midway since it probably would have been drowned in other reviews anyways. To summarize, it trades blows with the RTX 2060 for $20 less, and it will definitely cannibalize the RX 5700 non-XT. It also overclocks like a champ. Personally, I'm just waiting to see some power play table mod overclocking to see how far it can go. I do have one question for you guys. What do you guys think of AMD's move here? Personally, I'm holding a bit of a grudge knowing that AMD purposefully locked the GPU at lower clocks until Nvidia dropped the price on the RTX 2060. I I would have been fine if it was another Jebate move, but knowing that cards that are now on the shelves will require a VBIOS update makes me think AMD downclocked the RX 5600 XT just to better segment their product stack. It sucks too because every card will have a different way of updating the VBIOS and for some of them you might end up bricking the card if you don't know what you're doing. I guess this is my first thumb down for AMD this year. Let's hope Big Navi isn't one. Speaking of which, apparently Big Navi has now crossed the pond. This information comes from the Chinese forum Chip Hell, so take it with your usual dehydrated saline solution. Anyways, the post, which was pretty badly translated, says that engineering samples are now on the way to North America for testing, and it complements some of the specs that we were expecting. I say complement because this hardly confirms anything. It's just adding fuel to the smokeless fire, in my opinion. So, Navi 21 would have double the CU of the RX 5700. XT, so 80 CUs or 5,120 stream processors. That's an insane amount. I know we've been hearing the exact same number for a while, but damn, it's still so much. According to the post, the internal evaluation is 2080 Ti, meaning it could match it, or is it explosive 2080 Ti? See, the translation is absolutely horrible. I guess that's kind of what you get for using Chrome or Edge translations. Anyways, if Big Navi comes in later this year or even in the summer, it better be leagues above the 2080 Ti because it's now a year and some change old. The green team has not been falling asleep. Plus, there are already rumors brewing that Ampere or Hopper, we still don't know which name will be used for desktops, could boast 60 SMs and up to 20 gigabytes of VRAM on its GA103 variant. That's supposedly the 3080. Going back to AMD, other high-end cards would also be released after Navi 21. This would likely be the Navi 23 that we've heard about. Could be better or could be worse, although Navi 23 has been nicknamed the Nvidia killer, if that's any indication. All right, let's move on to a little bit of Intel. PC manufacturers are talking, and there's some good news if you were waiting for the blue team's next chips. Digit Times says that its sources at PC manufacturers have seen price cut proposals from Intel, but those price cuts won't come until the middle of the year. While we were expecting Comet Lake for April, the total absence of the chip in CES means it might be delayed to the middle of the year. So Intel might price their chips right for once, knowing what they did to Cascade Lake X's price we might have a pleasant surprise. I mean, the yields on these chips must be pretty insane thanks to the years of tweaking or improving. Lastly, this is a small call to action. My PC, which has survived a flood, a year and a half worth of renovations with drywall dust and wood dust in the air is due for a cleaning. I'm supposed to make a video about it and I was wondering what kind of weird PC cleaning accessories exist on the market that I could buy on Amazon. Short of killing it, please, this is still my main PC. So put the names of those things down below if you find some. I don't think links would work, but you can also send the links to my Twitter DMs. If that's easier, I'll respond 100%. Anyways guys, once again, hashtag Q&A down below to get your questions answered. It could be pretty much anything. And that's pretty much it for the video today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any comments or questions, you can put them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.
In the city of dreams, I ate my socks for some beans. I got the dream on my team, and we ride.